Resuming debate, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Indigenous and Northern Affairs. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'm very proud to speak uh, to Budget 2016. And when you talk about the reasons that you get into political life, this budget is certainly a reflection of one of the reasons that, that I got into political life, and that's about reaching out to all Canadians fairly, balancedly, ensuring, Mr. Speaker, that they all have opportunities in this country, and, uh, and that applies to everyone. That's why, Mr. Speaker, this evening when I speak, I also want to mention that I'm going to share my time with a member for Winnipeg South. So from the east to the west, uh, you're going to hear some uh, interesting perspectives on this budget and how they're helping Canadians from one end to the other. Mr. Speaker, I have spent, uh, as you know, uh, a number of years in politics, and I can guarantee you that in representing people in my riding and before that in my district at a provincial level, it has always, not always been easy. It is not always easy to advocate uh, for people, especially in times, Mr. Speaker, when governments are not tuned in and not listening to what the needs of people are. In times when governments don't always see the big picture and the vision for, for the country. And in the last number of years, in ridings like mine, Mr. Speaker, that are remote, that are rural, that are northern, that are indigenous, we have not been listened to. When you look at the infrastructure deficit that we carry today, it is because there was governments in a country in the last 10 years who did not believe in many of these communities and many of these regions. Regions that were north, northern, that were indigenous, that were remote. And so, Mr. Speaker, I'm, I'm very pleased to see a budget like we have today that is reflecting those needs and, and looking at the, the reality of what investment will take it will take to be able to meet some of those demands. In fact, Mr. Speaker, today as we speak, there's a budget coming down in Newfoundland and Labrador. I do not envy the job of the Premier and his government, but I certainly have confidence in them to know that they will make the right decisions for the people in their province. They are carrying a huge deficit, Mr. Speaker, and they have to make tough decisions. But I'm happy to say that I am part of a national government that recognizes this and have reached out in this budget to help provinces like Newfoundland and Labrador when it comes to creating jobs and new opportunity to provinces like Saskatchewan and Alberta and many others. Mr. Speaker, in fact, this year, we were able to increase the transfer dollars to Newfoundland and Labrador and we were able to ensure that there were increases in, in health transfers uh, over the previous years. We were able to see increases in social transfers over previous years. And Mr. Speaker, we were able to ensure that there was proper fiscal stabilization uh, investments that would uh, be transferred to Newfoundland and Labrador. So Mr. Speaker, it, will, it, it means partnering with provinces and territories. When a province is strong and their economy is strong, then we all benefit. Our government is recognizing that. We're recognizing that and we are partnering with provinces and territories to be able to help them do the things that they need to do to move infrastructure forward. But the other thing we're doing, Mr. Speaker, is we're also recognizing that the challenges they have need to be dealt with. Two years ago, Mr. Speaker, in my riding, under the former government, I had hundreds of people laid off and out of work when the iron ore industry started to collapse. I saw four mines close in my region. I saw one community, Mr. Speaker, at one point with nearly 400 for sale signs on houses. And when I li listened to the members opposite in the House talk about what are you doing to help people that are unemployed, it is so ironic, Mr. Speaker, that there were hundreds of people, thousands of people in this country that were laid off and unemployed under the current former government, Mr. Speaker, that received absolutely no support, absolutely zero support. So, Mr. Speaker, 
We have been able to work with communities like Wabush, like Labrador West, so that we can ensure that we have uh, better uh, employment insurance benefits for them to help them through the transition. We've been able to work with them in their communities and in, their, in, the, in the province to secure new investors and new opportunity. We've been able to put more money into investing in skilled training and diversity, diversifying their skill levels. We have been reaching out to communities in this way all across the country. We know, Mr. Speaker, that when we build stronger communities and when families have financial security, everyone contributes more to this country. That's why in our budget, our government was adamant. They were adamant about rising up the middle class in this country, about allowing families to have opportunities and be able to save for their children's future, to save for their own uh, retirements, to be able to own a home, Mr. Speaker. So these are the kind of balance, the kind of balance that our government has had to, to tackle, and I, I think we have did a great job. I think we have done a great job in being able to target so many middle-income families and low-income families in this country who really needed the government to give them a hand up in society. That's why things like our child tax benefit program, our reformed income tax program, is all going to make a difference. But in addition to that, Mr. Speaker, we've also realized that not all people in the country live equally. We recognize that in the northern regions of our country, the cost of living is much higher. That's why, Mr. Speaker, we made special, special initiatives within this budget to help. We added more money to programs like Nutrition North so that families could look at providing more affordable food to, uh, to their children within their communities. We're also going, committed to do a full review of the Nutrition North program, to work with the communities that are impacted, to look at how we can expand this program so that they do have better quality food, but most importantly, affordable food when they need it. We've also made changes, Mr. Speaker, to northern tax deductions for, for northern regions. For the first time in many years, we have given substantial increases under the Northern Tax Reduction Program, which will allow more families in the North to have more money in their pocket to deal with that higher cost of living that they have to deal with on a regular basis. Mr. Speaker, for the first time ever, I think I sat and listened to a budget, a budget that referenced not just Indigenous people or First Nations or Métis, but actually reference Inuit people and reference areas, Mr. Speaker, like um, Nunavut, Nunatsiavut, Nunavik, all of those areas, Mr. Speaker, that, um, that we never hear much about. But you know how they were referenced in the context of investment, investing money into critical programs across northern regions. I represent a large area of northern Inuit people. And for the first time, we will get investments in housing for northern Inuit communities. We will be able to provide better housing, better support programs, a better foundation to, to help them build their communities. We've talked about suicide a lot in this House in the last few days. The Inuit regions of Canada have a suicide rate that is 10 times the national average. We have to get to the root causes of these problems. That's why this government for the, is making one of the largest investments ever of more than $8 billion into Indigenous communities and Indigenous people across the North. Mr. Speaker, we are prepared to tackle the most challenging issues that we face as a country. We're prepared to resolve those issues in collaboration with those that are impacted because we know in doing so, all of us as Canadians do better.